not uh, understand how a guy could be a successful uh, generator, marine generator technician, if that guy doesn't know nothing about the uh, engines, only the electrical portion. Uh, the generator is half is the problems with the engine and half are problems with the back end. And uh, some problems are coming from the engine side and some problems are coming from the electric side. And some problems are combined. Uh, you need to uh, calibrate both sides, the engine and you need to understand the engine. You need to know about engines if, if you want to be a successful marine generator technician. No? Uh, you need to know about engines if not, uh, you don't understand what happened with the generator. Uh, can you, with the acknowledge that you have until today, uh, explain explain what is, uh, for example, the consequence uh, of a uh, low frequency in my generator? I have low frequency in my generator. Uh, this is an electric problem or uh, this is a mechanical problem? Uh, you, you remember a frequency is directly related with RPMs. RPMs. They are. Which is motor. Uh, this is a mechanical problem. Uh, I have low frequency. Oh, the engine, the generator was running and suddenly shut down and the code on the display is low frequency. Uh, what is the meaning of that? That uh, the, the computer, the intelligent part of this system sends that the RPM decrease and shut down the engine. And uh, shut down the engine and show the display LF, low frequency. Uh, because uh, that computer understands that uh, low RPMs is low frequency. But uh, really, 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 the people normally say, oh, frequency, frequency, this is an electric problem. Hey, my friend, don't try to modify any parameter in the, in the, in the electric side of the generator because this is a mechanical problem. Uh, how, how can I fix it, that issue, low frequency in a generator? Uh, okay, but... Uh, if I have low RPMs, it's because I have what problem? Issues with the winding. Throttle or the cable? Issues yeah. with? The winding? No, it's uh, not electrical. It's a mechanical the problem. The Excuse me? Throttle. <laughs> uh, the throttle is where I calibrate the RPM, but the problem is that uh, the engine is running good and suddenly blah, 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 and go down. This is not calibration of RPMs. You understand? It's not calibration of RPM. This is fuel. fuel. Thank you. Fuel. I have contamination of fuel, my fuel filter is clogged, my primary filter, secondary filter, all of those filters, I have water on the fuel, I have bubbles on the fuel, or if air? it's not fuel, air, thank you, doctor. Any of those air filter clogged, you, you can run like this, no, you finish in 30 seconds, no? Air. Okay, <laughs> it's a problem with fuel, okay. it's a problem with air. It's a mechanical problem. Oh, but the computer says frequency, and this is the, ah, my friend. The computer only, only determine that the RPM go down, and for, for him, for the computer, is low frequency. Okay. That's okay. it. He's trying to save all the equipment. Okay, and this is the entry level to explain, guys, that uh, all the codes that you have in the engine in the future, the solution is not replace that sensor. The people say, I have a, a check engine light in my car. A friend of mine connect the computer for me. And he said that is O2 sensor. I replaced the oxygen sensor four times and the problem continued, right, my friend. The O2 sensor sends that you have a problem and the code is activated. But that not indicate that the, the oxygen sensor is damaged. You understand? The sensor is a sensor to sense. And the sensor display the code and you see what is the problem. But uh, the problem is not on the oxygen sensor. What could be the problem? Because the oxygen sensor is activated. In, with, with your acknowledge until today. What sense, what sense the oxygen sensor? Fuel ratio. The amount of oxygen in the smog, in the gases. Depending on that amount of pure oxygen, the sensor says the engine is running rich or lean or too hot or too cold. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. That sensor sends the amount of oxygen in the exhaust gases. With that information, they determine if the engine is running rich or lean or this or this or this. Okay, I need to come back and check the spark plugs. If it's running rich, yeah, and check this, and check the air filter, and check this, and check. You need to solve the mechanical problem. And after that, turn off the, the disconnect the, the battery, turn off the computer, start again. All the, the, the code disappear. Okay, because you solve the mechanical problem. This is why the people say, okay, fix the problem, and after that, check again. This is the solution. The solution is not replace the sensor because <laughs> the problem is not the sensor. Later, we are going to talk with more details about that. Here on the generator is exactly the same. You need to investigate why I have high voltage. Why I, ha I have low voltage or low frequency or high frequency. Why the generator is running and it stops suddenly and shut down, yeah? You need analyze before you touch, before you disconnect, before you damage. Good guys? All right. What is the critical point when I, I am installing a generator? This point, no guys? Where, look, the raw water enter here, the raw water coming from, what is this? The heat exchanger. Ah, look at this, look at this. This is the last heat exchanger. This is the exhaust manifold. And here is, is the coolant reservoir or expansion tank. In, in other engines, like I showed before, the expansion tank is integrated with the heat exchanger. In this case, it's separated. It's the same, it's the same. Okay, raw water enter here. Raw water is mixed here with? With? Yeah. Exhaust, gas. exhaust gases. And here in this pipe you have gases with water together. This is the critical point. Pay attention, guys. If this point, the water, the level of water line in my engine room is here, this point is considered? If the level of water line is here, this point is considered? If it's the same, it's considered below. Because the boat is moving. Is moving. If this point is here, it's considered over the water line. And I don't need in between this point, in between this point and this point, I don't need what? Anti-siphon device. device. Or a riser. I cut it here, I go with a new hose over the water line 12 inches and I return here. This is the point, the connection. Ready, guys? Later, we are going to talk with more details about it. Okay, I don't need anti-siphon if my generator is located over the water line. I need anti-siphon if my generator will be located before or in the limit of the water line. To avoid that water enter in those exhaust ports and enter in the, in the manifold, in the combustion chamber, and bye-bye. Bingo finito, number one. Okay, the rest, now we are going to start talking about the electrical portion, and this is the, the, the engine portion. But uh, in the engine portion, I mentioned all the information that you needed, that uh, uh, the raw water be located properly. Uh, later, I am going to explain some recommendation about the raw water pump, the service on the raw water pump, and, uh, and that's it. Now we are going to be concentrated in the back end, in the electrical portion of the generator. Uh, can I can I use for this back end uh, other engine? This is gasoline. Can I use another one diesel? Yeah. With the same back end? Yes. The engine is not important. Okay? The engine is not important. But the capacity of the engine depends on the capacity of the back end. For example, pay attention. This back end is for 10 kilowatts, 10 kilowatts. Let me explain what is the mean. I want to know how much should be the capacity of the motor in horsepower. How you calculate that? Uh, 746. Okay, one horsepower on the engine 
is equivalent to 746 watts in the back end. If I have 10,000 watts in the back end, how much horsepower I, I need here? 10,000 divided by 746. And this is the capacity of the motor in horsepower. Of course, the recommendation is a little higher, 20% higher for safety factor. Good? This is the conversion from mechanical power in horsepower into electrical power in watts, in kilowatts. Good, no? Okay, now we are going to start checking the back end and the different type of, uh, types of uh, back end. You remember this element, guys? Yeah. What is this? The alternator, no? And uh, this is the rotor, yeah. and this is the stator. And uh, this rotor, this rotor, how many poles have? Like One, two, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Twelve. Ah, twelve poles. And this is the stator. Excuse me. And this stator, guys, this stator is hot and neutral and this is the ground ah this is single phase no single phase stator ah okay this is an alternator and after that this current ac enter in the bridge of diodes and is rectified in dc you remember that you are doctors on alternators and you check with danny alternators on the machine all right look at this i have the stator with the coil, and I have the rotor with how many poles? Four poles. But this is basically other alternator, big alternator. Oh, I have another generator, 150 kilowatts, it's bigger, but it's the same. The rotor and stator. Where is bolted the rotor? Where? is bolted the rotor on the the stator is touching the rotor in, in the stator never touched the rotor the rotor is spinning inside but never touched it touched burns okay where is bolted the rotor on the flywheel of the crankshaft the flywheel on the engine Ah, if the crankshaft is spinning, the rotor is spinning at the same speed of the engine. That's clear, guys? The rotor is spinning at the same speed of the crankshaft. Finito. Ah, you remember, we did, we used the formula to calculate the frequency. Can you refresh me what is the formula to calculate frequency? Frequency, frequency is equal to the number of poles times Times, times RPM. the RPM divided by 120. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, this is the formula to calculate frequency. And we discovered that uh, if we have a generator like this with four poles, the RPM should be 1800 RPM. The generator should be running at 1800. And we discovered that uh, if we have <laughs> a European generator with four poles, to produce 50 hertz, we need a 1500 RPM. You remember that? That's the formula for frequency and is directly related with the number of poles and the RPMs. Okay, in, in, in generators, 95% of the generators are configured with a, a, a rotor with four poles. There are generators, a small generator, I have a couple of times over there, with the rotor with two poles. How much should be the RPMs of that generator with two poles to produce 60 hertz American power? Twice, 3600 RPMs. And uh, if it's producing European power, 3000 RPMs. That's clear? Okay. Because they have only two poles. All right, great. This is the rotor and this is the stator. And the rotor is bolted on the flywheel of the engine. What happened? What happened if for some reasons the rotor touch a little the stator? Short and bingo. Burn it and bye bye generator. In what case the rotor could touch the stator? Uh, no. no. The phases are uneven? Because oh, yeah, the, the engineer 
wire the AC panel and balance too much amps in one phase and nothing in the other phase and the generator when the generator is running is tan, 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 touching the stator and suddenly burn. that's okay this is why when you wire the AC panel you need to connect AC and meter in both phases to check the, lo the load you open the, the, the panel periodically and you say okay I have 55 in one phase and 62 in the other one. That's pretty close. No, I have 10 amps in one phase and 90 in the other ones. This is good. This is catastrophic. And for sure, in that moment, you have the engine, the, the, the generator knocking, knocking, knocking. Good. Stator and rotor. OK. There are, this type of generator is called, is called alternator type because it's, it's exactly like one alternator. What is, the, what is the, the situation in the alternator? Remember me, quickly. In the alternator, the secret to, to produce good output power is what? The power of those magnets. And the power of those magnets depend on what? The brushes. The brushes and the excitation. If I have poor excitation, what happened with the magnets? Weak. And what happened with the output voltage? 10.5. That's not good. You, you know? It's poor excitation, contaminated brushes, damaged brushes, <coughs> bad, bad excitation. Ah, OK. In this type of generator, alternator type, the secret is the power of those magnets. And the power of those magnets depends on the excitation, the brushes. OK. The generator type alternator have brushes for the excitation. 